the marketable crude. The crude goes off to market, and then this water, is, which is filled with toxins, is supposed to be re-injected back into the well cavity. Instead, for 30 years, they just pumped it into the rivers and streams that feed the Amazon River. That also has been the home of these five, well, actually six indigenous tribes. One of them has since become extinct. But the five indigenous tribes that are actually part of this lawsuit, this was their backyard. Um, and there are now skyrocketing rates of cancer, leukemia, uh, childhood, uh, you know, 15 out of 20 children that are born have these terrible skin rashes. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And in addition to releasing this toxic water directly into the rivers and streams that feed the Amazon River, you know, hundreds and hundreds of these giant unlined pits were carved out of the jungle uh, and a lot of oily, toxic... Joe Berlinger, rest. stay there. Let's come back and talk about this. On the other side, the new film is crude. The New World Order Beast is genetically modifying your food, mixing vegetables with animals, and now experimenting with viruses. Without a long-term long food solution, you will have just two options. Starve surrender. or surrender. surrender. All, canned food All canned food supplies will eventually run out. What then? Then... Grow your own healthy food and feed your family forever. SurvivalistSeeds.com is now the nation's largest bulk heirloom seed company. And it's owned by a real patriot, Big John Lipscomb. You can now, you can have, now have an infinite amount of healthy vegetables like a watermelon, a bundle of carrots, or tomatoes for a little more than a penny each. SurvivalistSeeds.com. And now you can go into business with Big John at SurvivalistSeeds.com by becoming an affiliate. See his link at SurvivalistSeeds.com. Filmmaker Joe Berlinger is our guest. The film is crude. I'm playing some clips for people watching us on the web. For radio listeners, you can uh, visit the website of the film. Joe, where's the best place for people to go to find out more about crude? Well, uh, yeah, basically our website, www.crudethemovie, all one word, dot com. Um, and we got a whole set of information about the film clips the trailer links to uh, other organizations how you can how you can see it how you can get involved now i want to get into what's happening to these native peoples there but uh, also just the adventure of being down there yeah. i mean are you worried about the oil companies coming after you they do whatever they want in latin america yeah, well, when I was down there, I was uh, I was very nervous. I, you know, I did not make my presence known. Luckily, there were a lot of NGOs uh, like Amazon Watch monitoring the trial to make sure it, it, it took place. Um, and so I just kind of, you, you know, had small cameras and a very small crew and did a lot of the shooting myself. So I just kind of slipped in with the local media uh, and the local, not the local, but the NGO people. Uh, and I did not go and knock on doors and get interviews. I, I was just there to film the trial because, you know, first of all, we were a mile and a half from the Colombian border at times where the FARC in that particular part of uh, Colombia and Ecuador, uh, where the FARC, the guerrilla, anti-government guerrillas are very active and they, you know, kidnap Americans for ransom. So that worried me. Um, there was also uh, an area where the drug runners were very active. So you know, when I checked into my hotel, in quotation marks, my hotel in the little, this little jungle wild west town, uh, you know, on my first trip, I mean, I literally uh, stepped through a crime scene because somebody had just been murdered in front of the hotel. So I was a little, I was a little nervous. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a far less cushy than my, uh, my previous assignment of hanging out with a heavy metal band for three years on the Metallica film. Um, you know, it was, it was also a malaria zone. So we were covered head to toe with jungle gear and slathering ourselves up with industrial strength, uh, DEET spray to keep the mosquitoes at bay. Sounds uh, hellish. It was terrible, actually. I mean, it was, uh, it was 120 degree equatorial heat, you know, cause you're right at the equator. Uh, and the worst thing is you're standing in front of these massive pollution sites, these giant jungle pits, you know, cut out of the jungle, filled with tar and petroleum, um, and you know, you, you, holding a camera in this kind of heat, and you, you, you know, by the end of the day, I had a massive headache. Um, you know, it's funny. The first, uh, the first trip down, my doctor advised me to take malarone, which is a, uh, which is an anti-malarial preventative medication. 
because, you know, the CDC indicates that this is a malaria zone, and that stuff made me psychotic, man. I had my, uh, the first, uh, or second night in this hotel, I, I felt like I was having my Martin Sheen Apocalypse Now hotel room moment, uh, because the stuff was making me want to jump out the window. So well, I by the way, w one squadron, as I'm sure you know, of Delta Force came home from Afghanistan on that. Yeah. And three groups killed their families. The other guy killed himself. So, yeah, that stuff's got to be taken off the market. Oh, without question. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I, it, 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 it made me really queasy. It really, uh, I, I was it, uh, literally grabbing my bed and just praying that I'd get through the night. So subsequent shoots, I stopped taking the Malaron and just wore heavy clothing and covered myself up with, you know, the best bug spray money you could buy. Um, you know, so it was not an easy assignment, and then you add to it the emotional toll. I mean, you're talking to Native people whose lives have been destroyed. You know, this was a cultural genocide, um, and they've been poisoned. There's, there's no there's no drinking water anywhere. Um, you, know, you walk around these these villages. I mean, the thing that really made me want to make the film is, as you know, is you know, on my first scouting mission, I got out of the canoe. You know, we're taking the canoe down to one of these uh, to the. Kofan people, you know, you know, proud people who've lived there for millennia, who live off the water, uh, use the water to bathe, to drink. You know, in this country, we take it for granted. You go to the tap, there's water, but this is a place where the water has been completely polluted, and these are people who, you know, use the water for everything, transportation, bathing, drinking. Um, and I got out of the canoe, and these people, you know, deep in the heart of the Amazon rainforest were, you know, preparing a meal using industrial tuna, you know, the kind of tuna, canned tuna that you might get at Costco or something, you know, or a big restaurant supply company, you know, from another part of the world, deep in the heart of the rainforest, you know, these people were eating tuna because the fish in the river were either dead or, or deformed. Um, and that kind of just, you know, was a real wake-up call for me about how, you know, you know, I'm not smart enough to figure out whether Chevron should win or lose this trial, you know, as you'll see in the film. They've wrapped themselves up in enough legal arguments that who knows, uh, you know, who knows if the justice system can, can prevail. But from a moral standpoint, it's just, uh, it's just astounding that they, that they would go into the backyard of these people, uh, and, and, and foul the place up. And you walk around these indigenous villages, and what broke, breaks your heart is, you know, uh, we force. Joe, stay there, stay yeah. there. Tell, tell us about that when we get back. Got a break. Direct to you. And in your face, you're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. No matter how hard you try, you can't stop us now. No matter how hard you try, you can't stop us now. We're going to go back to the filmmaker of Crude, The Real Price of Oil, coming out in movie theaters. Art houses across the country. Very important documentary. I'll give you that website as well before our guest leaves us. But we're going to go back to Joe in just a moment. Okay, going back uh, to Joe Berlinger uh, and the film Crude, the real price of oil. Uh, we're, again, I want to get off the oil system. It's been great for us, but it has all this toxic waste associated with it. The greenhouse gas carbon tax thing is a red herring in my researched opinion, to put a tax on carbon dioxide instead of going after. That's why oil companies are now behind the greenhouse gas. It, it, it gets them off the hook for the cracking of the oil, the refining of the oil, the extracting it. Joe, you, you went down to Ecuador 25 times. I mean, that is just yeoman's work in this malaria-infested uh, equatorial region, uh, third world with you know kidnappings and police state. Uh, instead of me asking questions, you've got the floor. Let's talk more about why there's toxic waste, what this toxic waste is, uh, what's happening down there, where all this is going. Yeah, and, and let me just say, you know, um, I, I agree that we should be thinking about, more than thinking about moving towards alternative energy for a host of reasons. Um, but this film is not an anti-oil film. It's an anti-corporate irresponsibility film. I mean, I'd be a hypocrite right now to be making an anti-oil film because, you know, I fly to film festivals on airplanes, I heat my house with oil, I drive a car, you know, we're all kind of stuck in this system until until it changes. Um, but it's, a, it's an anti-corporate irresponsibility film. You know, there's responsible ways of 
drilling for oil and irresponsible ways of drilling for oil. And what happened in the jungle down there, uh, you know, Texaco, we, you know, we use Texaco and Chevron interchangeably just to explain to the audience, uh, the, you know, the operator and the, and the, and the, and the perpetrator of, of the, what I'm talking about is the Texaco Petroleum Company, which was purchased by Chevron. You know, they merged in 2001. So with that, uh, Chevron inherited the lawsuit. So sometimes I say Texaco, sometimes I say Chevron. It's, you know, so they're, 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 they're the same at this point. Um, but Texaco dis- discovered oil in the 60s down in this Amazon rainforest, this pristine jungle environment. In fact, you know, they say that one of the few places on Earth that survived the last ice age was the Ecuadorian part of the Amazon rainforest. You know, most of the Amazon rainforest is in Brazil, but the headwaters of the Amazon begin uh, in Ecuador, and the, the Ecuadorian part of, of the rainforest 